During the 1960s, there can be little doubt that Motown reigned, no pun intended, supreme. A relentless hit factory with 110 US top 10 hits between 1961 and 1971, tuned to lessons that founder Berry Gordy learned both working on the production line at Ford and as a not-so-good Golden Gloves boxer. Gordy created an empire where failure was not tolerated and sentiment was never encouraged. The label made some of the most beloved pop music ever. Timeless records like Dancing in the Street, My Girl, The Tracks of My Tears and I Heard It Through the Grapevine before launching into the 1970s with the Jackson 5 and some of the greatest albums ever made by Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder. Of those 110 top 10s, just over a quarter of them were written by the team of Lamont Dozier and the Holland brothers, Brian and Eddie, and were produced by Brian Holland and Dozier. They went on to found their own label, Invictus, and have further top 10s beyond that. Here are a dozen mighty Holland Dozier Holland songs. Make sure you have the playlist primed and your dancing shoes on. Eddie Holland himself had a few minor hits in the early days of Motown and leaving here is the kind of rough hewn slab of R&B in the style that Motown was to rid itself of until the late 1960s. But there are plenty of Holland Dozier Holland trademarks, the church hall piano, the punching strings and the four note downward run before the chorus that crops up so often in their songs. 11. Junior Walker was the undisputed party king of Motown and Roadrunner was a big Holland Dozier Holland hit for him. Originally, the notorious quality control team at Motown refused to allow this to be released as a single, but DJs were playing the album version so much, Motown eventually put it out where it made national number 20. 10. The much travelled Isley Brothers had released singles on at least 11 labels before they settled from 1965 to 68 on Motown. This old heart of mine filled with the pulsating bass, the vertiginously rising string lines and gambling descents, which typified Holland Dozier Holland arrangements, was originally meant for the Supremes, but took the Isley to number 12 on the top 100 in the new year of 1966. Take me in your arms, rock me for a little while. Deep Voice Kim Weston deserved better for Take Me In Your Arms, which only made number 50. The Doobie Brothers took it to number 11 with their cover version in 1974. Her biggest hit was her duet with Marvin Gaye, It Takes Two, which hit number 14 in early 1966. Weston, along with her husband, head of Motown's A&R department, Mickey Stevenson, quit the label in 1967 and later sued them for being cheated out of royalties. Heaven must have sent you. The Elgins were one of the fabled second string of Motown acts that included the Undantes, the Marvelettes, Kim Weston, Jimmy Ruffin or the Isley Brothers who had one shining chart moment and then fell by the wayside, although the Marvelettes made some criminally underrated records. The Elgins got no higher than number 50 with Heaven Must Have Sent You, but it made number 3 in the UK when it was re-released in 1971. Of course, they would naturally long since broken up by then, so they had to recruit a new singer and hit the club circuit, which garnered them a couple of more UK hits. The Westbound number 9 by The Flaming Ember comes in at number 7. Definitely the odd bird in this selection. Westbound number 9 by Detroit group Flaming Ember is a sort of a making inverted commas with my fingers, black version of Harper Valley PTA spiced with vague but out-of-date psychedelic references sung by a bunch of white kids actually the lead singer was the only member who appeared on the records who came on like an Allman Brothers light. So where is the merit in such a record? Well, the merit is that it looks like a hot mess on top but Holland Dozier Holland make it work and worked it all the way to number 24 one of three top 40 hits the band managed before changing their name and slinking back to the Detroit bar circuit where they became local legends. Number 6. Heatwave, Martha and the Vandellas. 
No group, it seemed, had fewer friends amongst the brass at Motown than Martha and the Vandellas, and equally had more friends on the studio floor or in the back rooms. Originally three scrappy Detroit girls until they were joined by an even tougher-minded Martha Reeves after Gloria Williams dropped out, they had six top ten hits and had they been given a modicum of the promotion and grooming the Supremes had, would have had many more. Heatwave is one of the best loved of all Motown hits, covered by all and sundry but forever truly remembered in Martha's salty vocal and the girls' bubbling enthusiasm. Five, Band of Gold by Frida Payne. A huge worldwide hit, memorable for its electric sitar riff. Payne's not too heavy, not too light, but oh so soulful vocal and its equivocal lyric. Band of Gold was another step away from the sound of Young America model of Holland Dosha Holland towards a more rock-oriented style. The salad days were ending for Holland Dosha Holland, but this is how you go out, with a bang, not a whimper. For sheer excitement, it is hard to top the Prince of Motown, Marvin Gaye's Can I Get a Witness. Truth be told, it's not that great a song, but it's the way it's arranged in all its Ray Charles-esque gospel fervour and seeing perhaps Motown's supreme vocal talent in the middle of his big breakout from 1962-1963. Marvin was a difficult cuss who was more than once on the verge of being sacked from Motown, largely because he saw himself as the Black Perry Como and persisted in this delusion, which never sold him a record by the way, up until about 1967 when he was passed to Norman Whitfield as his producer and nemesis, he hated the man, but who set him on the path to realising the kind of singer he could be. Can I Get a Witness, which made number 22 on the top 100, was recorded in a single take and featured none other than the Supremes on backing vocals. One tends to think of the Miracles as a self-contained unit, especially as far as songwriting is concerned, having perhaps Motown's finest in Smokey Robinson at their disposal. But in the early days they did turn to Holland Dozier Holland on a number of occasions for hits. They hit big with Mickey's Monkey, which was a smash, and this track, I've Got a Dance to Keep from Crying, which is almost indistinguishable from the finest songs that Robinson produced thereafter. It doesn't take a genius to see the leap from Lamont Dozier's opening lyric, Gather round me, swingers and friends, help me to forget the hurt within, to the whole of the tracks of my tears. The Miracle's secret weapon, by the way, was guitarist Marv Tarpon, one of the most underrated players of all time, who was as good as a funk brother when Smokey Robinson was in the room. Holland Dozier Holland gave the Miracles their last hit, Come Around Here, I'm the One You Need, before they became Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. But in I Got a Dance to Keep from Crying, they gave Motown one of the hardest swinging party records of the 1960s but one with a lyrical edge that had previously been missing from the label. Number two, Reach Out, I'll Be There by The Four Tops. What a battle it was to separate number two and number one. It was like the dividing line in Motown's history itself, between them being the sound of young America and them looking to move on to a more sophisticated production mode. And one of the primary media that they chose by which to do that was a song that they called Black Dylan, Reach Out I'll Be There by The Four Tops. Sung by Levi Stubbs at the very top of his vocal range in a style that alternated between shouting and gospel belting, it was at that point the most complex arrangement Motown had ever put out. The Four Tops, on hearing it, begged Holland Dozier Holland not to release it, fearing it would mess with their formula. But Barry Gordy took a chance on it and saw a US and a UK number one. However, in a mark of shame that should be held forever against my home nation, 
it made it no higher than number 62 on my local charts. Number one, Stop in the Name of Love by The Supremes. The fourth of five consecutive number one hits written by Holland Dozier Holland for The Supremes, the others being Where Did Our Love Go, Baby Love, Come See About Me and Back In My Arms Again. They later had another run of four in a row, built around You Can't Hurry Love, You Keep Me Hanging On, Love Is Here and Now You're Gone and The Happening. Stop in the Name of Love represents everything that was magical about Motown during 1965, the year when truly everything they touched turned to gold. And it shows Holland Dozier Holland's writing and production devices most clearly on display. Famous handout shake the hips dance that the girls so frequently performed to the song was actually taught to them by Paul Williams of The Temptations backstage at the London Palladium immediately before they went on. Motown's resident choreographer, the great Cholly Atkins, was furious at the girls for dumping her routine for that one. Naturally, the record was a worldwide number one and a million seller, except of course in Australia where we musical primitives only managed to hoist it to number 42. Holland Dozier Holland in their songs and their joyous arrangements managed to uniquely soundtrack the coming of freedom and what that meant in the early and the late 1960s. While they couldn't necessarily keep pace with the changes in their music to reflect the changes in society in the late 60s and were gradually nudged out by the edgy and Norman Whitfield as Motown's key songwriter and producer, they managed to find a second career trying to steer a middle path between the rockified soul sounds of the late 60s and the increasingly slick Philadelphia sound of the early 1970s. Their songs are a tapestry of teenage wonderment an outpouring of the kind of creative energy that can only be found when all of the right people come together in just the right place with just the right mission and just the right songs. And the songs of Holland Dozier Holland, these 12 and many, many more, as well as the artists they elevated, will endure forever as some of the greatest in the classic canon. <laughs>